So far, we have been talking about mass transfer as diffusion or convection. But what happens if we have them both at the same time? We will also look into two special cases, equimolar counter diffusion and diffusion in stagnant component, but we will explain them in more detail in two separate videos. So let's first repeat what we had said before. If you have convector transport in a pipe with a fl certain flux rate, meters per second, we can calculate the mass transfer rate, the convective mass transfer rate along that pipe, simply as the concentration times the velocity. If you have diffusive transport, on the other hand, we can calculate that as a diffusivity times a concentration gradient. And since diffusion happens from high concentration to low concentration, you have to put a minus sign in front of that. In what we say now, we will assume a binary system, so two components to make life easier. So what happens if we have both convective and diffusive transport at the same time? Well, consider these blue and red molecules. We have a transport, convective transport in one direction, and the red molecules are spreading into the blue molecules as they travel along the pipe. That looked rather complicated, didn't it? So what happens if we let the camera follow the flow? Well, then instead lo it looks like this. And suddenly life seems a bit simpler again. So how can we deal with this? Well, if we let the camera move with the flow, so our coordinate system moves with the same rate as the average velocity of the flow, then according to that coordinate system, we do not have a convection anymore. So this might seem strange uh, because suddenly we move the coordinate system and then it seems that we don't have a movement in the system that we study. How can that be? But you're looking at me now and I don't seem to be moving, right? I seem to be standing still, which is far from true because I'm standing on Earth and Earth is spinning around its own axis and Earth is spinning around the Sun and the Sun is spinning around the galaxy and the galaxy is moving. So I'm not standing still. But if we want to compare that with something else, so let's say that you look at the train that passes by and then you have passengers in the train that move back and forth from the cafeteria. That is like diffusion and convection happening at the same time. But you, if you sit in the train and then you see a passenger moving past you, that's the diffusion that happens in the train, so to speak. So if we let the coordinate si system be standing still in, with some reference point, then we simply add the two together. So in the train, the passengers relative speed towards the train plus the speed of the train gives you the speed of the passenger in relation to you who is standing outside the train as it passes by. So yeah, then you get this equation here. Okay, th but this is a bit difficult, right? Because you have a velocity in there. Is there any way we can get rid of that velocity? Yeah, there is. Because we saw before that the total mass transport is the concentration times the velocity, right? So n tot equals c tot times the velocity. But what is the velocity? Well, n tot, that must be the moment of a plus the moment of b. So this means that v equals na plus nb divided by c tot. And then we can rearrange this and say, that, okay, then na equals the diffusi diffusive part minus diffusivity times the concentration gradient plus ca divided by c tot times na plus nb. And the nice thing with this one is uh, with gases, ca divided by c tot, that's the same thing, as le at least if you have ideal gases, as the molar fraction 
of that component. Okay, we have two special cases here. If we look at this parenthesis at the end, Na plus Nb, there are two cases where this equation becomes simpler. One is if Na equals exactly minus Nb, then the entire convective part disappears. And that's called equimolar counter diffusion. As many molecules that move in this direction move in the other direction. So the net movement is zero, the net velocity is zero. The other case is when one component is standing still. So you have something like the air here, for example, and you have some molecules that move through the air and the air doesn't move. And that's diffusion in stagnant component. And we will look at these two special cases in two separate videos.